Hi, in this lecture we will talk about binomial coefficients. Previously we used a uh, binomial coefficient and choose k to count many things. So in this lecture we will look at the function itself. So first let's see the actual value of the function by plotting the graph of the, the function for various value of n. I'm going to use the uh, Cal program to uh, to do so to do so, uh, this Cal program uh, like an it's an like an Excel, okay. Um, so what we can do is like we put uh, some formula here. So this is n, and we put the formula for each value of the binomial uh, coefficients here, and this is k, okay. So uh, let's plot it uh, when n is equals t uh, ten first. Let's do it. Right, so this is how the function look like when n equals ten. Okay, um, so let's look at uh, larger value of, of of n of the function. Okay, so let's uh, do that with uh, maybe twenty. So I need to uh, copy down to. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So that's the formula. Okay. So let's plot it. So let's just look at the function. Okay. We start with zero. So, but the default uh, formatting for chart start at one. So we can just ignore it. So this should be zero. Okay. Not one. So the function look like this. You can see that uh, it's symmetric. And the largest value is is in the middle. Okay, so let's look at a uh, larger value of the function. So let's say uh, maybe increase this to forty. Forty. Okay. It's forty. So uh, let's plot it. So this is how the function look like. So again, it's symmetric, and uh, the largest one is in the middle, and it drops pretty fast. Okay, after a while, it go down to zero. Okay. All right. So after we seeing the chart, um, let's try to. Uh, see what we have seen okay so the function is symmetric okay around in n over 2 so n over 2 is in the middle so the reason for that wh why is that yeah we know that this is true because we know that uh, nk equals n choose n minus k okay now also that the maximum is at the middle so it looks like so this is the middle and then look like maximum is here okay um so um so uh so so when when n is even the maximum is here when n is odd the maximum is is at two points because uh n over two is is, is not an integer okay reason for that do you know why all right so we will try to prove that okay all right so um to understand the behavior of uh the binomial coefficient as k change so let's look at the two consecutive value. Okay, so you have look at n choose k and n choose k plus one. So in the plot, it would be like this point n choose k and this point would be n choose k plus one. Okay, it's next to each other. Okay, so let's compare the value. Okay, so let's expand each of the terms. Okay, it turns out that this is like n factorial over k factorials times uh, n minus k factorials and so I can sell out the one part of the factorial. Also, this is n choose k, so it's it's this. So we want to see uh, if this one is larger than that one. Okay. Now let's see the difference. Okay. So in the top, this one goes from n minus n n minus one n minus two down to n minus k plus one. This one goes down 
one step further to n minus k. Okay, and also in in the uh, in the denominator, this is just k factorial, but this one has k plus one with it. Okay, so so the extra terms are this one and that one. Okay, so we take it out. So it's like we want to compare one with uh, n minus k plus one, n minus k over n uh, k plus one. Okay. Now let's do some calculation. We can see that it's like comparing uh, this with k, k and n minus one over two. Okay, so that means that if okay if a, uh, uh, if k is smaller than this, it means that we are we uh, the next value is is increasing. Okay, but if k is, is smaller than this, then it means the next value is smaller. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. If k is smaller, then the next value is is larger. If k is larger, this is smaller. Then the next value is, is smaller. So the cutting point is when uh, k meets n minus one over two. So uh, in the summary, so if k is less than this, okay, then uh, we are we are moving up. Okay. If k is larger than this, uh, then we moving down. When you are at the middle point, right? So we reach the maximum. Okay. So it's like Go up, 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 and then we go down, 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 down. So here is at n over two if n is is even. Okay, so that's the largest value in the middle. So we do that by comparing this term and that term, and 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 simple calculation show that it's equivalent to comparing k with n minus one over two here. All right. Okay. So uh, we know that the largest one is at uh, the largest value is at the middle. It's here. Okay. So um, later on, we only consider n when n is even, because we don't wanna uh, we don't wanna deal with the case when n over two is not an integer. But that doesn't change much. Okay. So let's just pretend that n is even for now. So let's es try to estimate the value of this by by um, so w the only way we know how to estimate is to uh, figure out the upper bounds and the lower bounds. Okay, so let's l try to do that. So let's estimate the value of n, choose n over 2 to see how large it is. Okay, so um, the simple upper bound of this can be obtained by, we know that this is, this is counting the set of size n over 2, and this is number of all subsets of a set of size n. So the number of subsets uh, of particular size has to be smaller than the number of subset, number of all subsets. So we get this uh, this uh, upper bound. For the lower bound, we we can obtain the lower bound in in the same way. Okay. Uh, for the lower bound, we can note that the sum of all the size of the subset is uh, n two to the n. But then there are possible uh, n mi n plus one possible size of the subset from the sub subset of size zero, one up to of size n, right? So the average is this uh, n. The average size is two to the n over n plus one, but the maximum has to be at least the average. So you have this as the upper bound, and you have this as the lower bound. When you have the upper bound and lower bound, we combine them to get an estimate. So this is the bound, okay? So is this bound good enough for us to see? So let's say uh, let's let's try to plug in some value, okay? But numbers are really big, so let's see the ballpark. So just look at the number of digits, okay? So suppose you are computing uh, n choose uh, uh, two two hundred choose choose hundred. So how large is it? Okay. So we can just take the log base ten of this and that to see how many digits do they contain. So um, the lower bound says that the number of digits is uh, 27.8 digits. The upper bound say it's uh, 30.1. So it's pretty close. Okay. So it's off by not a lot, right? It's off by twen uh, 200. But then if you think of this in terms of digits, it's not that bad. Okay. So 30 digits, miss you miss only 10% of the digits. Okay. So um so it's about uh twen from twenty almost twenty eight digits to uh thirty digits this number. Is it big? Yeah it's kinda big. Okay.
So the question is, uh, can we get a better approximation for, for n choose n over 2? If you recall, um, we have a better bound for, for factorials uh, using the Sterling formula. So you can obtain a better bound for this using Sterling formula as well. So that would be the homework that you have to do. Alright, so that's it for this part of the discussions. I'll see you in the next part.